Shupana, shall we start? No. Okay. I think we can start, right? No, no, no. It's no. already uh, live on Facebook. Yeah, I can see. Just that. Okay. So very good evening and warm welcome each and everyone on behalf of Diabetes Awareness and You to the second session of A to Z of Diabetes series. And as all of you know that we have started this series by the alphabet of A. And today we will discuss through the alphabet of P and Q. P for pre diabetes and Q for quinoa in diabetes. Today we have two faculties with us, Dr. Minaxi Bazas, ma'am, and Mr. Oritra Khan. At first, we will start with the alphabet P, that is pre diabetes, and we welcome uh, uh, our today's first faculty, uh, Dr. Minaxi Bazas, ma'am. She is very senior and famous dietitian of Tamil Nadu Government Multi Super Specialty Hospital, Chennai, and uh, she is the national advisor of our. A uh, very famous course that is the uh, refresher of clinical diet, and uh, she is the NEC member of Indian Dietetic Association, treasurer of Association of Diabetes Educators of India, and she is a convener of NET Profan Chennai, and she is member of board of studies of various institution, Department of Food and Science, and she is a very famous author of the book called the Diet Matrix Handbook of Food Exchanges, and it is available on the Amazon and Flipkart. And uh, uh, participants, whoever wants to read this book, you can avail from the online. And thank you very much, ma'am. You have taken out the very precious time for us today. So now I hand over this session to you, ma'am. Thank you. At the outset, I'm truly grateful to Day for such a wonderful opportunity to be participating in the uh, A to Z session and with the alphabet P being given to me. Kindly allow me to share my screen. Ma yes, ma'am. You can do it. Is my screen visible, madam? Uh, not yet, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It is visible now. Thank you so much. Thank you. So at the outset, I'm truly grateful today. And today we'll be talking about pre-diabetes. My association with pre-diabetes has been, you know, as long as almost... I would say 19 years. I started off my practice in the Institute of Diabetology in MMC in 2002. And uh, several patients who were in the IFG and IGT range, they used to be referred to us and even young ones. When I say young ones, 18 year old, 16 year old also used to be referred to us. I'm talking of 20 years ago itself. And in my experience, what we had seen that when these patients with IFG or IGT were referred to us, if we would counsel them, you know, in-depth counseling. Till then, I don't think uh, uh, I really understood that 7% of weight loss as part of diabetes finish, uh, finish program would really help reverse diabetes. But definitely, we would advise them how we could, uh, you know, uh, to some extent, help this pre-diabetes phenomenon to move to a non-diabetic phenomenon. And we saw that in the next six months, if the patient, you know, the patient would follow up a with us at the end of every 12 weeks. So at the end of 12 months, if the patient had seriously followed what we had told in terms of diet and lifestyle modification, there was this reversal from pre-diabetes to diabetic phenomenon. And gradually, uh, the government of Tamil Nadu started an initiative called the Tamil Nadu Health Systems Project in which there was prevention of non-communicable diseases in which I was uh, a part of faculty, not officially initially. 
initially it was only the doctors who were taking classes on nutrition medical nutrition therapy on how to prevent diabetes though ncds did include even cancer but we were not part of uh, cancer prevention program but we were definitely part of the diabetes prevention program in that we also had prepared a book you know what book, what should be the mnt to prevent ncds with reference to diabetes and initially as i mentioned to you doctors used to take the session and uh, there used to be doctors nurses health officers throughout the state of tamil nadu from various districts from various primary health centers a gathering of about 20 to 30 of them used to come all the way from their districts attend the program and in that the second session used to be medical nutrition therapy gradually when the questions became too many to be answered by the doctors to the doctors they felt it was time that a nutritionist walked into the session and handed over the session to a nutritionist until today thankfully it's only the nutritionist uh, who's handling this medical nutrition therapy to prevent ncd so with that little background i would want to take on this session on pre diabetes so when we talk of pre diabetes we need to understand that it can be reverted to a normal glycemic state that's the first thing that's amazing no you know when i used to start my session in the ncd prevention program i used to tell all of them just for fun sake but to see the reaction i used to tell them that what if a sensor was fixed beneath the chairs where you all are seated and the next 24 hours it is sensing the blood glucose through the time you are seated here during the ncd prevention program and tomorrow morning you get the information that you are either a diabetic or a pre diabetic how would you respond so it's horrible you know to be uh, in in those days we used to call type 2 diabetic but now we we uh, do not call anybody like just like that we do not address them as a diabetic we say a pwd or a person with diabetes so the reaction used to be oh god i don't want to be a diabetic or to be labeled a diabetic all my life meaning first thing is oh my sweets are gone the puri mas puri puri alu ka masala is gone or whatever indulging in in mithai is gone so the first thought when when you say that you are going to be labeled as a person with diabetes the thought is food only then the thought goes okay i may be put on metformin or insulin or whatever so if a person is given an opportunity to reverse the pre diabetic phenomenon to a non diabetic phenomenon i think it's amazing and that could be done in the simplest of way that is lifestyle modification which is uh, called as per ace guidelines 2017 as lifestyle medicine it's not any more like lifestyle uh, modification it's like about 5 to 10% of the individuals with the condition of pre diabetes or intermediate hyperglycemia develop diabetes annually unfortunately if one is obese or one is having android obesity or a strong family history with both the parents having diabetes or being born to a gdm mother or having some signs of insulin resistance as simple as that black pelvity nape of the neck you can identify that a person this person needs to be screened for pre diabetes or diabetes and then work upon them the pre diabetes can be reverted to normal glycemic state as well reversion to normal glucose even when the transient is associated with a 56% reduction risk of future diabetes independent of previous diabetes previous treatment for example even we have the gdm mothers who post delivery if they are going to gain more than 10% you know as high as 20% off from the usual body weight they are also at high risk of developing type 2 diabetes so i think they live in the state of pre diabetes so what is the criteria for defining pre diabetes if the fasting blood glucose i think my internet is unstable so i will just of my video yes ma'am yes ma'am okay yeah okay so the criteria for defining pre diabetes would be the fasting blood glucose is between 100 to 125 mg and a post 75 oral glucose tolerance test if it is between 140 and 199 mg and the third thing could be or it could be a hpa1c between 5.7 to 6.4 so any one of these if it is met then you can you know unfortunately label the person as a pre diabetes person but as i mentioned to you and i reiterate the fact that it is reversible at the same time uh, see during covid pandemic also 
a lot of them have been put on steroids and uh, they also walk into the if they are on Ma'am, we can't hear you. Maybe the poor internet connection. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Now you are audible. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, just a minute. I, I just stopped sharing, I think. Yeah. Okay. Let me know. Please let me know when I'm not audible, madam. Yes, yes. Okay. So, unfortunately, when uh, I was... Can I interrupt? Uh, if yes, it's possible, you can off your video because okay, your, uh, your interconnection is very poor, actually. So. Yeah, yeah. Now you can hear me, madam. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. So, unfortunately, during my... Uh, when I was hospitalized for COVID pneumonia, but I was a gestational diabetic uh, mother and uh, thankfully, I'm not a pre-diabetic or a diabetic right now. But during the COVID-19 uh, hospitalization also, my sugars went uh, ma'am you are not audible this in mind if you are a non diabetic you Am I audible now, madam? Yes, now, yes, now you're audible. Okay. So, give me a moment. So, pre-diabetes, the problem with pre-diabetes, it is associated with macro and microvascular complications. And these complications are directly proportional to the succession of hyperglycemia in diabetes. So, you're at a very, very high risk of cardiovascular diseases. So, I usually tell people who have a fasting in between 100 and 125, I say, you're at a very, very high risk of CBD and you're like a cat on the wall. It's like for those people who are on medication, they are not so much at a risk. When compared to somebody who's a pre-diabetic. So P21 starts, we understand that, you know, whether it's prevalence of diabetes, undiagnosed diabetes or IFG or IGT, the numbers are soaring and they are very, very troubling. So it's time we acted now before it's too late. So when do we screen? five repeating at the end of every three years when it comes to children and adolescent what do you do considered in the youth who are overweight by greater than race or ethnicity if you are an Asian with insulin resistance like acanthosis nigricans infants are always born with fewer neurons fewer nephrons and fewer beta cells if they are exposed to very large uh, amount of calories during their, you know, from their low birth weight infancy, during their growth phase, they also develop, you know, type 2 diabetes because they are at a risk of type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes because of the fewer beta cells they are born with. So what do we do? The consensus recommendations do tell us that refer people with pre-diabetes and overweight or obesity to an intensive lifestyle intervention program that includes individualized goal setting components like the Finish diabetes prevention program. Now, when we talk of pre-diabetes goals, what are our goals? First is a 
lifestyle modification, 150 minutes per week of physical activity, a minimum of 7% of present body weight loss, I would say in BMI of more than 23 in our population. For high-risk individuals with high BMI, pharmacological and surgical interventions may be considered like the bariatric surgery. If these goals are not achieved, metformin appears to have a good safety record and may be of help with weight and lipid management. Another way of doing lifestyle intervention is using technology-assisted diabetes prevention intervention programs, like one of it being done today. Setting realistic expectations. We cannot talk of somebody who is about 95 kgs to become their ideal body weight if the ideal body weight is say 65 kgs in a matter of one month we need the ideal realistic goal of weight loss of four kgs per month and maximum 12 kgs in three months which could be a realistic goal and which will be achievable and sustainable we should not choose on something which is not choose which is not achievable practical practical or sustainable so always go slow and reach your goal accordingly so I would say according to the lifestyle model, uh, released, uh, say suppose somebody is consuming about three, calories per day. Can I tell you, so he has to reduce 500 calories initially. How do you reduce the 500 calories initially? You know, if you are a dietitian, you know how to teach the patient or guide the patient how to reduce the 500 calories. If you are a diabetes educator or you are a healthcare professional who is doing diabetes education, it's easy to tell the patient to reduce one cereal portion for breakfast, two for lunch and one for dinner. When you reduce like this, you are losing 340 calories. Apart from that, the accompaniments which go along with the 340 calories and reduce the fat intake from the present intake. to a routine of 500 ml per month at least per day to minimum of Point number one. Point number two, breaking up sits on insulin with a small effect size attenuation for the triglycerides. The physical activity breaks were slightly more effective for glycemic attenuation compared to one continuous bout of physical activity. So this myth has been broken that you need to do a continuous bout of physical activity in order to improve the postprandial blood glucose. So the best bet would be have breaks in between when experimental conditions were extended, energy expenditure were matched. Example is walking for two minutes every 20 to 30 minutes of sitting. When I used to look at my patients in the NCD prevention program, I used to tell them, the doctors used to ask me, Madam, some of the patients are really obese and most of them are women, unfortunately. And they tell us we cannot walk because we have osteoarthritis of the knee in specific or we have knee aches. So we are unable to walk. We cannot do physical activity. How do we reverse our pre-diabetes phenomenon? I used to tell them, if the patient has been able to walk up from the you know, entrance of the clinic to the door or to the desk of the physician, that many minutes, three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, into 10 to 12 times a day gradually will help in weight loss. So walking for two minutes every 20 to 30 minutes does wonders. Now lifestyle modifications as per 2002, Noah et al., Set the same 7% weight loss, 150 minutes. Finished diabetes prevention published in 2003. Evaluated the effects of lifestyle intervention on short-term and long-term changes, both in diet and exercise behavior, and the effect of intervention on glucose and lipid metabolism. Now, what really did they do in the DPP program? They assigned to metformin group 850 milligrams of metformin twice a day, the placebo group, and the lifestyle change group. What did they do in the lifestyle change group? They achieved and maintained a minimum 7% weight loss, encouraged them to do it for six months. They saw that there was a weight loss of one to two pounds per week through calorie deficit of 500 to 1,000 calories and restricted fat to less than 25% of total calorie intake. Post-standard calorie levels were used 1,000 to 5,000, 8,000 calories. 
and expenditure of 700 kilocalories per week physical activity with either brisk walking, bicycle riding, swimming, or 75 minutes per week of strength training would also be included. Now, what did they find at the end of three years? They found there was a reduction in incidence of DM by 58% compared in intervention and 31% in the metformin treated group. After 10 years, what did they find? That the intervention group had a delayed diabetes by 34% and developed it only four years later. Whereas the metformin group delayed diabetes by 18% and developed DM two years later than the placebo group. After 15 years, what did they see? The diabetes incidence itself reduced by 27%. Metformin group had the res reduced incidence by 18%. So 55% of the DPP lifestyle, 56% of the participants taking metformin, and 62% of the placebo group developed type 2 diabetes. The women in the intervention group had comparatively lower prevalence of microvascular problems, no overall difference in vascular problems between the intervention metformin or placebo group, there was an overall 28% lower rate of small blood vessel problems in non-diabetes individuals. So there was another dark king IGT and diabetes study, wherein again they found that they, they had followed up with for a period of six, six year period, and they found similar you know, results due to paucity of time. I wouldn't be going into depth of each of them, but just giving you a snapshot of it. So at the end of Six years, what did they find? 21% maintained IGT, 32% regressed to normal glucose tolerance, onset of DM delayed by 14 years in the normal glucose tolerance group, and 9.8 years in IGT group. Incident of diabetes was 67% in the control group, 43% in the diet group, 41% in the exercise group, and 46% in the diet plus exercise group. Incidence of DM was lower among the lean individuals in all the groups. Then came the ID, ID uh, Indian Diabetes Prevention Program, which was a three-year RCP. After that, if you look at a snapshot of all these various programs, you will see whether it's the Dark King, Finnish DPS, or the Diabetes Prevention Program, risk reduction was between 34% to 69%. In the Finnish, 58%. In the Diabetes Prevention Program, 58% at three years, and at the end of 10 years, 34%. So similarly, we had the DIEM project, STOP NIADM, ACT NOW, the DPP. In each of these intervention programs, they found risk reduction. Obese patients achieved sustained significant weight loss with behavioral interventions, more in in-person support than in the remote support group. So what's the best eating plan for people with diabetes and pre-diabetes? According to ADA 2021, we know the Mediterranean style diet pattern, which is a lot of beans, nuts, extra virgin olive oil, fish eating pattern, five to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables. But it, is it practical in the Indian setup? I would say go pseudo Indo Mediterranean style so that we, it is achievable and practical. Low carbohydrate eating plan, but I would not say go less than 50%, not going to keto diet in order to achieve pre diabetes to non diabetes phenomenon. Focus on whole grains, nuts, servings of fruits and vegetables to five to seven servings. I really wonder if five to seven servings is really practical. Though the NIN very clearly tells us that we need at least 75 grams of fruit a day and 300 grams of vegetables a day. Minimal, I would not say minimal consumption of refined and processed. I would say halt refined and processed foods. Reduce total dietary fat, saturated fat in specific. Trans fats make it nil. Limit intake of sugar sweetened beverages. Step up the fiber to at least 14 grams per 1,000 calories. And in your my plate, my plate should reduce from 12 inches to 9 inches plate. And half the plate should be the non-starchy vegetables. Then comes the carbohydrate foods. And last but not the least is the protein. And follow the food order. First the fiber, then the protein, then the cereal portion. And see the blunting in the postprandial. And if you are a slightly large eater, split the meal so that you can save on your beta cells. There was another study done with complementary therapy, or I would not say alternate therapy, with the help of yoga, what did they do? Based on the inclusion criteria, they chose on pre-diabetes and those who are on the IDRS risk score more than 60, they included them. Exclusion was those score morbid, surgery, DM, pregnancy, BMI greater than 40. Those who had already done yoga for three months or more, just before the dates of recruitment. So what was the intervention? Intervention was done for 30 minutes. 30 minutes of physical posture, that is the sun salutation and asanas to mild to moderate physical activity, 
plus 30 minutes of breathing exercises like Kapal Bhati, Kriya and Pranayama, meditation and relaxation techniques. This was done for a period of three months. What did they find? Development of diabetes mellitus, 11.21% in the intervention group and 32% in the control group. Reduced relative risk of conversion from pre-diabetes to type 2 diabetes by 63.2% in the intervention group as compared to the control group. Intervention group had 1 to 2 fold, 1.2 fold significantly higher chances of conversion to normal glycemia as compared to the control group. This conversion was better observed in individuals less than 40 years of age. This conversion to normal glycemia was only significant in females and overweight obese subjects greater than 23. Another important concept is the diabetes self-management education and support. If you keep reminding them, if you keep supporting them, keep educating them that there is a way you can reverse the pre-diabetes to the normal glycemic status, it does wonders. So diabetes self-management education and support programs may be appropriate venues for people with pre-diabetes to receive education and support to develop and maintain behaviors that can prevent or delay the development of type 2 diabetes. Now, I would want to end my presentation by showing a snapshot of what India eats today. Initially, India was eating about 66% of carbs in 2014 as per the starch study. And today, what India eats is based on the NNMB survey, which was done in six in 16 states in the urban area with 10 regions spanning 10 regions and in the rural area with about 10 states and spanning over four regions they found that the carbohydrate intake is as high as 86 percent in the east and that is in the rural area in the urban area also it is 81 percent in the east so the picture is similar from east to south south to west and then to the central india the carbohydrate consumption is way high and the type of carbohydrate is important. We need to choose more on, more on resistant starch in the form of lentils, pulses, or the cooling and then the consumption method. And quantity is also another important point. So both quality and quantity of carbohydrate has to be emphasized on. And secondly, the cut down on the total processed and ultra processed foods, which are containing high fat, salt, saturated fat, and sugars, and third, but not the least, is cut down on simple sugars as much as possible. So this is a macronutrient intake when compared to the adult and the rural, uh, you know, the adult population in urban India and rural India, wherein we find that the carbohydrate intake being very high in rural, still the prevalence is on the lower side. But note that their protein is high, fat is low, processed and ultra-processed snacking is on the low, and the carbohydrate intake is more from millets, and uh, whole grain cereals, though in the urban population also people are moving towards millets, but portion control has to be kept in mind and avoid the polished millets. So I would say if you want to chisel your body back from the pre-diabetes to the non-diabetic phenomenon, you should not go fat-free or carb-free, but remember to walk, walk freely, and you are what you eat when it comes to macro and micronutrient intake. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you very much, ma'am. You beautifully you have explained us about the pre-diabetes. And uh, just from my end, uh, one question is there, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Like uh, for the rural people who have the, a very low economic status who has, and uh, as you know that basically that depends on the uh, starchy foods, the uh, cereals product. So uh, how uh, you counsel them? And uh, as we see, uh, see that it's very difficult to counsel them when we are saying that you have to take the uh, vegetables and uh, non-starchy foods. And uh, that time they are saying that uh, the, but nowadays vegetables is very much expensive. So what kind of counseling? Uh, is I it? have been working in a low income socioeconomic status hospital all my life. So I don't find it very difficult for me to tell my uh, rural population patient group to modify their diet. Only thing I work on them is the quantity of the carb which they are consuming. See, they are all working physically active, working through the day either in the fields or in otherwise or they are laborers. They are heavy workers. Some of them are heavy. Some of them are moderate workers. It's a slight tweaking in the diet which I need to do in terms of the preparations what they are eating. Like, for example, in South India, if they are choosing on pongal, you know, I will tell them to go on to a vegetable dosa. How do you prepare a vegetable dosa? Whatever vegetable you are having, cooked, uncooked, blend it in the 
whichever blender you are having either a home hand pounding blender or a mixy whatever you are choosing on blend it and add it to your dosa batter and you get vegetable dosa if you cannot do that if you are eating four dosas you bring it down to three and have two dosas without oil and one with oil and add a lot of economical vegetables which are grown in their own farm to the sambar what they are preparing cut off the coconut cut off the groundnut or replace those with basic other non high fat uh, vegetable chutneys like we teach them how to bake carrot ki chutney radish ki chutney pyaaz tomato ki chutney small things i have always mentioned one thing that we need to be practical and sustainable solution so we don't give them fancy diets we don't tell them you take the quinoa and stuff like that uh, fortunately we have uh, our uh, next speaker who is going to be talking on quinoa but for the rural group it's always they are lot of ragi consumption okay so we tell them don't have the ragi porridge have the ragi in the form of adda or dosa or add it to your wheat flour and prepare chapatis out of it but we tell them how to tweak their present intake into a healthy quantifiable portion which is more of complex carb low of gi and gl and in south india they are very fond of bananas so we tell them banana is not the only fruit which is available in the market you choose on guava which is cheap you choose on sweet lime which is cheap and low in gi and gl if you really want to have a banana have a raw banana which has more resistant starch so and choose on lentils whenever you are hungry follow the food order that really helps we tell them to strain away the rice water from the star starch which is prepared when they are preparing rice avoid pressure cooking rice so those small small tips really help them how to reverse whether it's pre diabetes or bringing in control with diabetes yes ma'am so it's means we have to continuous uh, this is a counseling process to teach the method of cooking uh, and the portion size is very important for them yeah thank you thank you very much ma'am uh, at present uh, shukana do we have any kind of questions in the facebook live have we received uh, not yet ma'am uh, no questions is there so you have beautifully explained us so thank you so much uh, thank you ma'am thank you for the opportunity and i'm sorry for the technical glitches no no it's completely it's okay because it's very heavy heavy, heavy rain is there yes ma'am so please take care uh, take care of yourself and a good evening ma'am thank good you day. so much thank you so we have completed by the alphabet of uh, uh, p or that pre diabetes uh, now we'll start with the uh, q that is the uh, quinoa the role of quinoa in the diabetes and now i will uh, introduce our next faculty uh, uh, mr aritra khan and uh, it's really i am feeling very honored to introduce him as he is a senior uh, very senior from me and uh, i know him personally very well and it's now it is a very famous dietitian in uh, west bengal yes and most welcome and we have uh, from diabetes awareness in you and uh, he is a clinical nutritionist and diabetes and heart failure uh, patient educator faculty of clinical Diet uh, dietetics department of kbc medical college and hospital and really uh, dada i welcome uh, you uh, from my end also because uh, really i am feeling so proud today as um, i am a students of uh, from kbc medical college <laughs> and now you are the faculty of uh, that colleges and now i am thinking if if i could be there and uh, you will be the faculty so it will be the awesome so thank you dada and uh, now i hand over this session to you thank you so much kajol for your lovely introduction and you were even same but i've seen you on last 20 2019 with a physical meet of uh, Uh, some okay. some large cookies uh, with with the yes. day yes, so you know the uh, associations with the day not today is a long back way with uh, devashi sir into the you kalpana the another people so it is really lovely to see you over here and thank you so much for your nice introduction about me so i'm not wasting the time so today the next uh, uh, session about the quinoa or quinoa whatever the people in just pronounce will come to that part but q stands for the quinoa so we will discuss about the part and i will try to shed the light on regarding the topic and also the diabetes because diabetes awareness you the most and the foremost part is diabetes and along with the other diseases so let me share my screen also
Kajal, my screen is visible? Yes, yes, absolutely visible. Okay, great. So, the today is the topic is quinoa. So, with the topic I got uh, from Indrada and you, but I have added one more sentence that a health proton. Why is a health proton? Because, you know, nowadays people are, you know, very much, you know, uh, aggressive to have the all this kind of foods, all this kind of foods, all this kind of vegetables, all this kind of Western fruits, Western foods, anything. Because we know we are Bengali, we are Bengali. We love rice, we love roti, we love chile, we love khoi, we love all those things. But yes, the days are progressive, but we shouldn't be left behind. We have to catch up with the all technical uh, cops, technical cereal, technical pseudo cereal, whatever it is. So quinoa is a part of that. So what is quinoa or quinoa or quinoa all about? So quinoa is basically a seed, is a plant known scientifically as Chenopodium quinoa. So quinoa is a high amount of the nutrients is present and usually we try to call is a superfood. Why superfood? Because quinoa contain lot of you know macronutrients, micronutrients and the health benefits, all the important components are there. So although quinoa or quinna is pronounced is kin wa. So basically, kin wa is a part. So now Kaju will say, no, no, today is the Q is the topic, no K. So but the pronunciation is the kin wa, K W E N W A H. So kin wa is the pro pronunciation basically, is prepared and consumed like a cereal grain. It is categorized as a pseudo cereal as it does not grow on grass like wheat, oats, or rice because kin wa basically is a type of a flowering plant. We can say is the acanthaceae family. It is come from the acanthaceae family of the flowering plant, basically. It is not a typical cereal, but we can use, we can consume is like a cereal. Quinoa has a crunchy texture and nutty flavor. It is also gluten-free and can thus be enjoyed by people who are sensitive to gluten or wheat. Because we know people are there we are basically lactose and gluten intolerance. Maybe a lot of people are there, they have celiac diseases, they can't tolerate glu gluten, gliadin, glutenin, this kind of protein. But quinoa doesn't have any kind of gluten, it is absolutely gluten free. Quinoa seeds are flat, oval, and usually pale yellow in color. So the color can range from pink to black. It taste can vary from bitter to sweet. Basically, is a different, different taste we can get is a quinoa is there. So we can make it a different cereal based also. If you want to make a quinoa, we can get a lot of recipes, a lot of different cereal, a lot of different salad, a lot of soups, you know, okay, a lot of side dishes, a lot of breakfast porridge we can do. Because I do understand there are people in our country, in our West Bengal or in India also, there are the different income go from a few people are middle income group, a few people are high income group, a few people are underprivileged group. So in that cases, what uh, Minakshi ma'am told that the, there is some ragi is predominantly available over there because we know ragi is basically poor man's milk. So those people doesn't want to consume milk or doesn't afford milk, they can have enough options for a ragi because ragi is also a very good calcium deep cereal. So in, in like that, those people can consume quinoa, they can consume quinoa. But quinoa, again, I'm saying is not a grass, but rather is a pseudo cereal botanically related to spinach and the amaranth group of family. Now, what about the nutrition facts of the quinoa? Cooked quinoa consists of 71.6% of water, 21.3% of carbohydrates, 4.4% of protein and 1.92% are fat basically. So if you get the calorie, 120 kilocalorie, water 72%, protein 4.4 gram, carbohydrate 21.3 gram, sugar is 0.9 gram, fiber is 2.8 gram, fat is 1.9 gram. So we can see, we can see quinoa is such a cereal where the protein content are very good, where all the vitamin content are good, 
and also the notable part is the dietary fiber because we know according to our RDA recommended dietary allowances the fiber percentage should be 40 gram of dietary fiber despite of soluble fiber and insoluble fiber we have to take on daily basis then we are talking about the quinoa and next we will talking about the quinoa and diabetes so in the favor of diabetes we want to consume the good amount of dietary fiber from quinoa we can see 2.8 grams of dietary fiber mostly insoluble dietary fiber we can get 100 grams of cooked quinoa what makes quinoa special why quinoa is so special while it may be a largely relatively new to a lot of supermarkets quinoa has been a large part of the south american diet for many years it dates back to Incas. So Incas said that quinoa is the mother of all grain. Why saying mother of all grain? I will, I will directly come to know that the differences between quinoa, rice, quinoa, brown rice, each and everything. Then we'll be the yes, it will be the mother of all, all grains. It grows in the Andes Mountains and is capable of surviving harsh conditions. While it's like in a grain, quinoa is actually a seed. Quinoa is actually seed. Again, I'm saying we shouldn't say this is a grain. We shouldn't say this is a cereal. This is a pseudo cereal, the family of the amaranth uh, class. And also this basically are the class of the plantain kingdom. There is also reason to believe that there are a lot of research has been developed. This quinoa is so famous of its high fiber and protein content. And quinoa makes you feel full for longer. Yes, because we know they are soluble fiber. Soluble fiber are absolutely good for diabetes. Quinoa also comes a little bit of soluble fiber. And insoluble fiber is a very good that can reduce constipation, diverticulosis, controlling blood sugar, not only blood sugar, but also other non-communicable disease like cholesterol, triglyceride, malignancy, uh, hyperuricemia, lot of, lot of things, okay? So in that cases, quinoa is so famous. There is also reason to believe that it can help lower risk of the high blood pressure and the high cholesterol. We have seen a patient is having AC inhibitor, like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors medicine. Patient is having ARB, Androgen receptor blocker, maybe beta blocker, maybe other uh, statin they are taking for the cholesterol, statin and HMD co reductase or phenofibrate for the cholesterol triglyceride. If we give the quinoa diet, quinoa uh, in a mixed, uh, you know, vegetables or salad or soup, the blood pressure will be widely controlled because quinoa have low sodium. Quinoa have a good amount of magnesium, good amount of potassium, but sodium content is very low, although more research is needed. In that case, if we want to say some downside, what are the downside? A patient is suffering from low blood pressure, patient is suffering from hypoglycemia, patient is suffering from hyponatremia. In that case, quinoa is not recommended. If it is recommended, it should be calculated by a qualified dietitian and diabetes educator. That is more important to make a note. Now, we'll come to the differences between the white rice and the quinoa. We can see one cup of white rice, it gives 242 calories, is basically 186 gram. If we see one cup of quinoa, it gives 222 calories in 185 gram. So it's really good. And in that case, if you talk about the carbohydrate content, the white rice carbohydrate, 53 gram, 21% of carbohydrate. In that case, quinoa is 39 gram, 16% carbohydrate. If we see the percent of total fat, basically 0.4 gram of fat, 1%. If we see the quinoa, total fat is 3.6, 6% of fat. If we talk about the protein, protein is 4.4 gram, 9%. If you talk about the quinoa, is 16% of protein content are there. And also, 
the content of the iron, content of the magnesium, content of the vitamin B6, content of the folate, content of the thiamine are very, very, very rich source when you talk about the quinoa. Amra, we are the Bengali. Basically, we don't eat the bhatir fan, mamar. We don't like to have these things. Why? Now, after having this, uh, we will get obese. Okay. This is very absurd and very meat because the B1, the B1, the thiamine, the anurin are very, very important nutrient because it controls the tricarboxylic acid cycle, the TCA cycle if you talk about the biochemistry. But we try to avoid of this kind of thing from our Bangali Bhatir Mar or Bhatir Fan, we try to use to, you know, uh, drain it off. But quinoa have a very good amount of thiamine, vitamin B1 that we get intact from if we take any kind of vegetables or salad or soup or any cuisines made with quinoa. Now we'll talk about the brown rice versus quinoa. We, we, we took 100 grams of brown rice, we took 100 grams of quinoa. The calories, brown rice, 111 calories, quinoa, 120 kilocalories. But it's not shocking. Why? Because the total fat, the total fat percentage, 0 0.9 gram in quinoa, basically this is a good fat, uh, it's a brown rice, is a quinoa, 2.9 gram. Maybe the fat percentage is a little higher, but this is a good fat. If we talk about the carbohydrate, 23 gram of carbohydrate in quinoa, 21 gram of carbohydrate. If we talk about the protein, 2.6 gram of protein we can get from 100 grams of brown rice. From quinoa, we can get 4.4 gram of protein, basically 8% from the quinoa. And also, all the essential, all the essential amino acids are present in quinoa. Because we know lysine, methionine are very important amino acids. Basically, lysine, methionine, we can get from a chal dal ka khichri we can use to get. But from the quinoa, we can get all the essential amino acid. Not only that, in this pandemic situation, we are talking about our mental happiness. We will talk about our mood, uh, you know, good feel, feel good factor or good mood kind of thing. In that case, we always discuss about the serotonin. So what is serotonin? Serotonin or thrombotonin is a neurotransmitter basically is a good for a feel good factor for human being. We know when the physician used to prescribe those kind of medication, SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. But if we get from the food group, what would be the best than that? And also the tryptophan. Tryptophan is a very essential amino acid that can try to reach the blood brain barrier of the serotonin. So it's a very good for our mood swings, our neurological, everything. Iron percent is so good, 1.5 gram, 8% from 100 gram of serving. Dietary fiber, 1.8 gram from 7% and quinoa from 100 gram, 2.8 gram. So in comparing this chart, we can see quinoa, maybe the fat content is a little high, maybe the calorie is a little high, but the protein, but the percentage of dietary fiber, the percentage of the iron are so good rather than brown rice. So quinoa would be the choice instead of brown rice. Now, now this today's topic, how quinoa can manage our blood sugar. That is very important. Part of living with diabetes is managing your diet to help control your blood sugar. This is so important because there is a condition each and every year after 30 years of age, we have to check our blood sugar. Whether it's not there, whether it's there, the treatment will start. In that case, it is so good that foods are high on the glycemic index are associated with causing blood sugar spikes. Healthy meal plans of people with diabetes often focus on choosing foods rated at medium to low on the glycemic index. We can see, we can consider any kind of glycemic index, 55 or below, is considered as a low glycemic index. Quinoa has a glycemic index of around 53, meaning it won't cause as dramatic a spike in blood sugar. But you guys can ask that we are basically talking about the glycemic index of the particular food. 
But if we talk about the glycemic load, then we can see the quinoa's glycemic load is 10.7. The glycemic load is 10.7. Basically, we want to consider the glycemic load, not the glycemic index. How the glycemic load will calculate? The glycemic load equals the glycemic index of the particular food multiplied by the carbohydrate per divided by 100. So that is very, very important that we have to consider the glycemic load and quinoa's glycemic load is 10.7. So closing our eyes, quinoa is a very good substitute for a patient suffering from diabetes mellitus. Healthy meal plans of the diabetes. On focus, choosing food return, medium and low glycemic index. Quinoa glycemic index of 53, meaning its own as diabetic is a spike. Most grains don't have all the amino acids needed to make a protein. We talk about the aromatic amino acid. We can talk about the brown chain amino acid. But if we talk about all the amino acids together, if we talk about all the essential amino acids together, then quinoa contains all the essential amino acids, make it eat a complete protein. If we talk about the complete protein, because we know the amino acids, the amino acid from the protein will give a tremendous role for the insulin you know, stimulation and everything. So in that case, if a quinoa have a good amount of protein, that would be a good choice for a patient suffering from diabetes. But again, I am saying a patient is suffering from diabetes, patient is suffering from diabetic nephropathy, with hyponatremia, the, those in that patient, we shouldn't go for quinoa because quinoa contain good amount of potassium and good amount of magnesium. And also quinoa contain low amount of sodium. So in that case, it will not match a patient suffering from hyponatremia and also suffering from hyperkalemia with diabetic nephropathy. So ap ap apart from that, if a patient suffering only along diabetes, there is no comorbidity like kidney or CKD or renal disorder, those patients can have quinoa because this is a very good substitute for a patient suffering from diabetes. Not only that, one also other downsided like patient having heart failure, patient having had some medication like spironolactone uh, or the, like mineralocorticosteroid antagonist receptor. In that cases, the spironolactone can increase the potassium storing action, in that case, quinoa will not go for particular those patients who are having this kind of medication. So that is something drug nutrient interactions are there. But if we talk about the general blood, uh, blood sugar patient or general uh, hypercholesterolemia patient, general uh, dyslipidemia patient, in that case, quinoa will as, uh, work as a superfood. So we can match the Incas point is a mother of all grains. That is really true. The dietary fiber content in quinoa also higher than the content for many other grains. This means that quinoa can be particularly beneficial for people with diabetes since fiber and protein are considered important for keeping blood sugar under control. Managing total carbohydrate intake per meal is very important for blood sugar regulation. One cup of cooked quinoa contains about 40 grams of carbohydrate. So we can see there are soluble dietary fiber and maximum the insoluble dietary fiber are there, which can work tremendously lowering the blood sugar, lowering the blood cholesterol, and lowering the blood triglycerides. That is very important. One study from the Journal of Medicinal Food from the Trusted Source showed that potential for a diet for pervy Andean grains, including quinoa, to help manage type 2 diabetes and the high blood pressure associated with it. There was some double-blinded study, cross-sectional study that has been shown and been proved that including quinoa really to manage for the type 2 diabetes. This patient is having other medications also like Boglibos, BB4 inhibitors and all those things. But according to the diet with quinoa will definitely and precisely considering their blood sugar level. Quinoa seeds, leach, phytosteroids and other compounds with anti-diabetic properties. This phytosteroid basically presents in quinoa, which are fight against the insects. Lot of insects because 
because they have to save the trees. Now, because the tree is the flowering plant, the acanthaceae family. So in that case, it will really grow after leaching and all those things, we can see the containing, the flavonoid, glycoside, everything to significantly lower the flasting blood glucose, hyperglycemic mice, leaching effectively releases and concentrates bioactive phytochemicals from quinoa seeds, providing an efficient means to produce a food-grade mixture that may be useful for anti-diabetic applications. So it has been published uh, some uh, PubMed Index General, and we have seen and we have copied with this help of these scientists. That is very important. How to prepare quinoa? Like many other grains, quinoa can be bought in packaged containers or from the bulk beans. It naturally grows with a bitter coating to discourage space. If you can make it rice, you can prepare quinoa. Just combine with water, boil and stir. Wait for 10 to 15 minutes for it become fluffy. You can tell it's done when the small white ring separates from the grain. You can also make it a rice cooker, which are quick and easy way to prepare the grain. Quinoa has a slightly nutty flavor. This can be made stronger by dry roasting it before cooking. Once you have cooked it, try to add in some fruits, nuts, veggies, according to your choice of season. Whatever you choose. If you love fruits, you can add fruits. If you love nuts, you can add nuts. If you love veggies, a lot of uh, good veggies, you can add veggies. Because it, it should be a, a combination of a good uh, symbiotics level, like fruct oligosaccharide, prebiotics. You, you can add all the vegetables. Because a diabetic patient can alone do cure with only a group of nutrients. Maybe quinoa, a particular group of nutrients, but you have to add the vegetables. You have to add the other protein part. You have to add the fiber, other fiber also. Then it could be a balanced diet. Alone quinoa definitely can't control your blood sugar. It could be a meal based kind of thing that will definitely help to reduce and control your blood sugar spikes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your active listening. So now if there is a question, please ask question. Thank you very much, Aritrada. It was very informative. Thank you, Kajal. Yeah, there are so many participants in the Facebook Live who are writing continuously that uh, your session is very informative and they are knowing very much about the uh, QNO. Thank you. A lot of love to all the audiences for, you know, being active listening. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Dada, there was a one question. I, I think uh, there are so many people have given all the, uh, already answered. That is, Kuinoa Kothai Power Jai. I think from Kothai all the supermarkets and all. Kolkata is a very good place. It's a very good supermarket. It's a very good shop. It's a very good shop. Now, Kinoa is widely available in the different markets also. You can see, and also there are different brands that are you know, available in Kinoa, but you can always check with the nutritive value with the flip up with the information because there are some preservative non permitted color which are predominantly are incidental hazards and adulterants are mixed with the quinoa that you will not because what i have discussed about the raw quinoa which is good but you know in synthetic way the business persons are making this thing you have to check twice or thrice before purchase yes Dada, there is another question that is can we use uh, quinoa in our daily routine can we use quinoa in our daily, daily routine? routine. Yes, yes, you can You can use quinoa in our daily routine. But again, I am saying that we are basically Bengali. Okay, so we shouldn't always depend on this Western kind of diet. Maybe quinoa have a lot of function, a lot of good things also. But if you like quinoa, you can have quinoa. But again, I am saying quinoa contain low amount of sodium. If a patient suffering from low blood pressure, a patient having a, you know, hypo kind of tendency, hypoglycemia, okay, maybe a history of syncope, senseless and all those things also, then don't depend only in quinoa, have some good other calorie food. Yes, uh, related to that, that another participant has given the raised the questions, that is if patient have CKD, then quinoa is applicable or yes, in I what amount? Already, if yes, already, then already what already amount? Uh, sorry, Kajal. She is asking that what amount? If yes, then what okay, amount? Yes. Look, amount, again, I'm saying this is very case specific. Okay. We have to check the CKD stages. Maybe CKD1, CKD2, CKD3, CKD4, CKD5. Maybe EGFR yes. less than 20, less than 10. So we have to check the stage. 
maybe patient is on dialysis. So in that cases, lot of things. If, if the patient is on dialysis, you can give easily quinoa. But the patient is on low protein diet, maybe low protein one, low protein two, then you have to calculate with the other parts of vegetables and fruit there because quinoa has a very good amount of potassium and very good amount of magnesium, phosphorus in these places. So in that cases, a patient is suffering from the CKD. So we can give widely quinoa 75 grams, 85 grams daily diet. No, that is not. So if for the CKD patients, so cautiously, we have to use the, uh, uh, this yeah, product. We have to use I the calorie yeah. calculation and also the protein because quinoa already, I have seen the two gram protein you can get from brown rice, from quinoa you can get four, it is double. So if a patient is having 40 gram protein per day, so you have to check with the calculator because quinoa is not the only food he is taking or she is taking. No? Other fruits, other vegetables, other egg white or chicken would be there. So that has to be calculated properly. Yes. Uh, thank you, Dada. Uh, another question is from the dietitian Mega Gosi is asking that uh, always ki organic quinoa I suggest korbo. Mane bolte chahi ki organic tai suggest korbe ki na. Look, this organic, non-organic, this is again a business kind of term. Okay. Yes. Because uh, whatever available in the organic, because I'm uh, you know purchase uh, uh, by, by selling something, I pick in a stamp is the organic. Okay. So whether it's pure organic or not, that we don't know. So no. again, I'm saying it will go for a good branded kind of thing. We have said the FSSI approved. We have also checked the nutritive value, which is level over there. So that has to be properly authentic thing that you can check. Yes. Yes. So the uh, one question now was there from my end, Dada. Yes. Um, uh, is it cannot be affordable for the poor economic uh, status look uh, quinoa is definitely costly okay it's not too uh, you know uh, too easy to get so you know at very fast i have mentioned that uh, we are living a very poor economic thing we actually also told about these things also because the hunger index we have checked the global hunger index our score is not at all good in india is a very you know far away from the side because the economy and all those things is a major concern in that cases those people want to purchase quinoa they can purchase quinoa, but those people, uh, you know, having a problem with, you know, purchasing quinoa or in the affordability issue, in that cases, they will not purchase quinoa, okay? So other options will be koi, chira, or uh, muri, should be urea free muri, could be another option. Because the whatever the nutrients you can getting from quinoa, definitely were not getting from muri and all those things, that is also in contact. Yes. So one uh, other questions from my end, and uh, it's a very common questions from the patient end actually. So when we cook it and how it's a uh, taste, taste is good or uh, like? Uh, uh... Look, it's a very, what I would say, the kind of flappy kind of thing because I have tasted twice or thrice quinoa. Uh, I, I like it, but it's not like the other, other meals like of that. So you can get a very flesh, very fluff, flappy and something a different taste from the right. How I can mention the taste in over... <laughs> in a laptop, but definitely something is a different kind of thing. If you consume like dahlia, brown rice, all together mix, the taste with the quinoa. Because again, I'm saying that quinoa is not directly a cereal. It's a pseudo cereal. It's not yeah. a grain. It's a basically a seeds. Now the part we are taking as a seeds and having the, you know, kind of a, our edible part and comparing with the other cereal part. So that's the reason definitely taste will differ from normal rice and thing. But yes, Quinoa doesn't have any kind of gluten. There are some fat is there, the gluten is there. No, no, I will not have. I'm saying repeatedly, quinoa doesn't have any gluten. Those people have gluten encephalopathy, doesn't have to rise and all those things. They can directly go for quinoa. Yes. Uh, there are one more question is there. Uh, that is, Eta cook korer aage ki shok kore rakte bolbo? Eight to nine hours? Eight to shok kore rakte parte bhalo hoi. Oh, she is asking time. for eight to nine hours. This much time is required. No, no, no. That's so much work. No, two hours, three hours, four hours. It's only one hour. So, if you have a child soak, the way basically we are soaked rice before cooking the rice, that the way we can do the thing with the same process. It's not like that. You have to overnight soak it. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So lots of participants are uh, commenting that your session was excellent, oh, outstanding oh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm highly indebted to all the participants. Thank you so much, Tara. Thank you so much. And uh, I think we will uh, meet again in uh, another uh, initiation.
Yeah, thank you so much. You were thank you so much. That is the awareness of you, Devashishar, Indujitda. And you are also a member also, of our organization. Yes, yes, definitely. But I want to my heartfelt thanks to all of you for inviting me for a lovely session. And Minakshi is also a favorite of mine. I have, you know, taped an Oscar related heart session too. It was so lovely. So thank you all. Stay blessed, you know, and keep a very good health. And Kajol, thank you for a lovely, you know, your organizations and your just, you know, the way you are, you know, keep, keep your this keep your blessings, Dada. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, good evening, Dada. Yeah. Okay. Thank so, yeah. Thank you. So. All the participants, uh, thank you. You have been with us uh, from the alphabet A until today. And uh, we will definitely uh, hope that we will